Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I recently put out a video where I showed you guys my gear maintenance kit, kind of how I take care of all of my more traditional style gear, because that's what typically needs maintaining to last a long time. And a lot of you said you'd be interested in seeing a video where I show you how I maintain my gear. So I've got things like my hatchets and axes, I've got my wooden things like buck saws, my knives and their leather sheets. I've got my outdoor boots, I've got some leather gloves, different kinds, and I've got some waxed canvas things. And also by popular request, how I wax my Fall Raven Keb trousers. So I have a variety of things that I maintain regularly in order to keep them in really good shape and also weatherproofed so that they last a long time and they also perform well while I'm out camping. I'm not sure how much in detail I'm going to go, I'm kind of just winging it here. Um, but yeah, if I miss anything or if you guys have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to reply in the comments or keep it in mind for a future video. So to start, this is my gear maintenance kit that I showed you in the last video or that recent video I talked about. It's just an ammo box. It's from Cabela's. I really like the aesthetic. I think it's super cool. And also it's like weather sealed. So I like that. Um, but I think what I'm going to start with right off the bat is my wooden things. Um, how I keep things like my buck saw and my axe handles in good shape. Um, so with that, I'll pull out a couple different creams or butters or weather sealants type things and I'll kind of show you guys a little bit about them. They are from different companies and they all perform kind of the same. Um, so I'll talk about it a little bit. So the first one is the Buxa Butter. And this is by Bear Essentials Outdoors, which is the gentleman who makes this wooden Buxa that I love so much and use in almost every single one of my videos. And all you really have to do for this one, kind of apply it with your, with your hands really. The best way to do it. So that's pretty straightforward. But what I'm gonna do is just go quickly go through and do my entire buck saw. I try to keep up on it as much as I can. I don't really have like a maintenance schedule for any of this stuff. I just kind of try to analyze everything as I'm using it. And if I notice that it's getting bad on a certain trip, then I'll just do it when I get home. So that's the buck saw butter from Bear Essentials Outdoors. So this is a combination of linseed oil and beeswax that I made myself. Um, I forget the ratios completely, but I did write an article on my blog on my website about it, which is just KarinaAlexis.ca. Let's go check that out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, this stuff is essentially the same. It's a little bit thicker of a paste. I think I called it tool wax. Tool, I called it tool paste. And basically I just have a little rag in here and I put a little dab on it, and then I just apply it to every little bit. The nice thing about this tool paste wax is it also does leather and wood. It's kind of like an all around weather sealing, conditioning type of paste. And it will also keep your axes and knives from rusting because it's water resistant or hydrophobic, I guess. And so that just really, Keeps everything in really nice shape. Okay, so that is all I use for, as far as weather sealing, all of my things. So I use the same thing on my leather gloves. I just take this tool paste wax and I just kind of spread it all over. Keeps the gloves in good shape. Keep some condition so they don't crack or soak up any water. These gloves have a kind of a funny story. I was actually on a camping trip with my now sister-in-law. When we got to camp, it was like rainy or starting to rain and stuff. And there was just these gloves just sitting by the fire pit. And uh, so I put them on, they were like so stiff. They were stiff as a board, but they were good leather gloves. And I actually didn't bring any on that trip because it was summertime and I don't normally, but we use them for the fire and stuff. and. It just worked out having them, and anyways, I was like, they fit me perfectly. Somebody left them behind, so snoozy lose, I guess. 
and I still have them. I use them for all kinds of things. I've used them for welding, um, moving stuff, tending the fire, that kind of stuff. So I have all kinds of leather gloves and mitts, and that's all I do to keep them weatherproofed and it keeps them in really good shape. Also, these ones that I found, super pliable now. I've just been using them and conditioning them, and they're great. So that's leather gloves. Next up is leather sheaths and axe masks. Um, so basically all I do for all of this, again, you can use this, but I'll also show you the third option of wax or oiling. This one I got from Bushcraft Spain. They sell it on their website. And this actually is a leather sealing cream. This one is a little bit more um, oily. It's very, like when it warms up, it gets really runny uh, as opposed to the other two. Um, but this, is, it makes it really, really easy to apply. So I do the same thing. So this is my famous Puko. That's how I keep all my leather goods in good shape. So the final use that I have for my tool paste for wax is I actually use it on our hiking boots and our outdoors and our winter boots. Um, so what I do is basically the same thing as applying it to anything else. Just put it on the rag. And these are actually new, new boots for Brandon from Hikes. Um, it's his second pair. He absolutely loves them and so do I. It's all we use for hiking and even for work. And this tool paste, I just do the same thing. I rub it all over, especially along the seams. And all this does is repel some of the water doesn't let the material soak it in, even though uh, Hikes boots are actually really good for that already. They're actually Gore-Tex and they do a really good job. I've had water like up to here and stayed completely dry. Um, but as they get older and stuff, just like any boot, they start to wear. So if you kind of keep up on the weather ceiling, then it helps them last a lot longer. And uh, yeah, for a boot that already lasts really long, you're really taking care of them at that point. And then for the winter boots, these are the Baffin, I forget what they're called. Anyways, these are the really good Baffin boots, and I do the same thing with them. Oh, and just a quick side note, uh, for your knives and stuff, if you've got, like, my Puko here is stacked birch bark. And I do the same thing. I rub the tool paste all over it and it just keeps it in great shape. And uh, also stays really grippy, which is nice. And I also put it right on the steel to keep it from getting uh, rusty. Orange backlight kind of conked out back there. <laughs> so next up. We're gonna talk about Greenland Wax from Fall Raven. I have made my own version of this, so it is possible to make your own. It's basically just a combination of beeswax and paraffin wax. And I'm gonna show you how I weatherproof all of my kind of canvas and other materials. You just take your cube or whatever of wax and you literally just rub it on. So just like that. And as for the method of warming it up, you can do four things. If you have a wood stove, you could literally hang it beside your wood stove until the wax warms up enough that it melts into the material. You can use a heat gun and you just kind of warm it up. You can use a hair dryer, which I used to use all the time. Um, I'm just using Brandon's heat gun today uh, to do all this stuff. Or, or I can literally just do it the lazy way and hang it beside the fire. Like, it's so easy. Or you throw it into the dryer and you let it like warm up and tumble dry for a few minutes until all the wax heats up enough that it soaks in. I don't, I wouldn't recommend the dryer. I've never done it. I don't want to ruin my dryer. <laughs> I don't know if it does, but I also know some people who use it all the time. So maybe it doesn't wreck it at all, but we've got fairly new machines since we moved into the house. so. I don't uh, really want to take that chance, but you can, I've known lots of people who just rub the wax on and throw it into the dryer. So here are my keb trousers. Um, also I wanted to note, 
I'm going to be doing a video solely about my fall ribbon keb trousers, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about them and how they've lasted for me over the past five years. So here we go. I've got this G1000 material. This is over the pockets and stuff. And I'm just going to start doing the same thing. Wax on and then wax off. Worth noting too is that doing this actually helps keep the pants quite um, clean as well because it helps repel like dirt and mud and stuff like that too to the point where it makes it easy just to brush off and it doesn't actually stick to the material. Um, so that that's really handy because kept trousers you really don't want to wash them a lot. Um, these ones I've only washed like a handful of times and I've had them for like two years. Um, Cause they just like, they stay in such good shape when you keep up on the waxing. And um, yeah, like you really, they're out, they're outdoors pants. You really don't need them to be perfectly clean for every trip. And maybe some of you think I'm a dirt ball, I don't care. <laughs> see the whole thing. So I did the dark section that you're seeing is just just finished drying and cooling and I'm just filling in the blanks here now. Okay so it's the next day, <laughs> just so you guys are aware. So I did this bag differently than the other one, um, just to show you guys the difference. Um, so I did the whole thing. So some of the most important parts, obviously, you want to focus on are like places that, you know, if you're out in the rain, are going to get the worst of it. So straps, they go on your shoulders. Um, the top of the pack, all in that area. And one of them, also the most important things to do is the bottoms. Like I've traveled with this backpack too, so in the airport, like when you're setting it on the ground, having the protection on the bottom of your bag actually, like really, like dirt just brushes off. It's, it just repels not only water, but like also dust and dirt and stuff like that. It makes it much easier to just brush off. All right, so I'm gonna let the front of this dry off a little bit and cool down so that it uh, dries really nice and doesn't just end up on the table here. So here's our completely waxed bag. And all we have left to do with this guy is condition some of the leather. Leather patches and leather straps. So we'll just go along and make sure those are nice and conditioned. It will look dark at first, but once it dries out a bit, it looks really nice, gives us this just a nice patina. Well guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to make one last note. I was going to touch on sharpening and stuff, but I'm really just not a pro at it. And that's something that you could really mess up your knives and axes um, if you sharpen them the wrong way. So I just don't want to be responsible for that. Um, I kind of get along here and there with mine, but mostly I just drop them just to keep an edge on them. And if you have good practices and you're not digging your axes and knives into the dirt, um, you really don't need to sharpen them all that often. Um, so if you do find that you need that kind of information, I'm going to leave that up to you guys to look up. Um, but hopefully what I did show you in this video was of value and you can weatherproof all of your canvas and leather goods and wooden goods as well and uh, just keep everything lasting long and, and performing well in the elements. So, like I said, thank you guys so much. Please share this video with someone if you think that it will add value to their lives as well. And, uh, yeah. I don't know what the next video will hold, but I'm sure I'll come up with something interesting. <laughs> so thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next one.